Consistency is everything. It's the Hot Seat Radio Show. Me and Sean Fortine, Mr. Myrtle Valley, Daryl Taro, and of course, I, Donovan Sadiq, local troublemaker, and as they uh, have labeled me recently, the guy that doesn't know what he's doing. So uh, for somebody that doesn't know what I'm doing, I'm also making a lot of waves. Our show is making a lot of waves. I want to re- remind everybody, April 22nd, that's a Saturday, 5 to 7.30, we are having a debate at the Moreno Beach Golf Club. Please be there. Be set up. It's going to be great. If you went to the Edgemont debates, it's going to be in a similar format. Uh, it looks like all four of the candidates uh, might show up. So I was really surprised. Um, Mr. Cabarrus contacted me, and he wants to know a lot of the information going in and out, out and in. But that wouldn't be fair to the other candidates if I give them a little heads up. I just said, if you really want to know what's going on, you need to show up. So... Uh, Hopefully we'll have all four candidates, but but the other three candidates for sure are going to be there. So yeah, but, so I guess us uh, check all the candidates for your pieces before. Uh, yeah, debate. yeah, we, we we don't want to do a George Bush type thing where they have that little device on, the, on their backs or anything like that. So it is. Uh, I got to tell you, there's also another debate, and it, it was I find it weird because Ladonna Jimson had asked me when was my debate, and I told her, you know, I'm not. That's why I told her. And now, all of a sudden, today's planning! She's having her debate. And uh, it's going to be at the Landmark Middle School, whatever the deal is, on a Thursday at 5 o'clock. So if you are not too tired from driving uh, from that great paying job in L.A. and Orange County, having to listen to your wife and kids, deal with them, get something to eat, hopefully you could make that debate. Because I'm going to say this. The more the debates, the better. But it doesn't make sense to have a debate two days from another debate. And from what I understand, uh, this is not official, but this is what I heard. Commissioner Baker is unfortunately not going to make Denise Fleming's debate. And if Corberas doesn't make that debate, that means you only got two uh, candidates. And I don't see what the point is at that point. Because uh, the, ex- the excuse that I heard, and it's a very valid excuse, is he wasn't getting enough notice. I mean, these candidates are doing things and they have appearances. And so when we set up our debate, we gave them three and a half weeks notice. So there's really no excuse not to show up to our debate. And it's, there's no excuse for you, the listeners, not to show up to our debates. Because it's on a Saturday, 5 o'clock, you know, it's at the golf course. Come check it out and see what's going on. So... Moving on from that, uh, Daryl, what do you got going this week? Uh, you went to the school board meeting. Tell us about it. Well, it was interesting. Uh, it was, they had a lot of um, a recognition award ceremony for the kids, for athletics, academics, um, which was it was um, interesting because you got the and they talked about statistics and about um, the graduation rate. Mm-hmm. And but also too, you had a lot of students there, but you also you had parents. But also that was interesting. I saw a flyer on the table saying um, they had um, school board member Hogan's picture on it, and I was I read it, and it said something like uh, people to come and support a uh, uh, board member Hogan uh, because of uh, potential recall of some residents. And okay, but why would why would they want to recall them? I don't know. That's that's why I was trying to figure out because I had never heard of this, and so there was, the room was packed with a lot of people, like a teachers, classified, and, and there were some pl- uh, parents there too. So wait, wait. So are the teachers calling for a recall too? Oh no, no, oh. they were there in support. Actually, they oh, in were support there. Of, they yeah. were in there in support of, for board member Ogin. Okay. So there was more like a, a rally in, in support of him. Right. Um, th- to me, th- th- this sounds like a Highland Fairview ploy to get more people on that board because the plan is for him to get as many of his employees did as we saw in the city council meeting with my man Rafael Gogaris and uh, you know I mean he's doing everything he can to do that so I you know I see a pattern forming so for you guys the voters that are listening and I also got this uh, was told to me at random I was told by a good source that Highland and Fairview employees listen to every word we say. And and that says a lot of what we're doing and in informing the public and people of that. But uh, go, go ahead, Daryl. Well, that that was going on. and But also, too, there was a lot of the meeting. I mean, it was we we was there for about for 
for two hours or trying because I wanted to say something, but there was a lot of other people there that wanted to speak. But uh, the president of the school board, he's they limit um, public comments. Okay. So basically, they try to stand it to a little to about thirty minutes. But I mean, they gave only two two minutes per person. But right. still, people who were there, like parents, didn't get to get to say their piece. Yeah, they, they want to tire you out. They want to, you know, they you know, shouldn't they do the award ceremonies after everybody gets to speak? Wouldn't that be a better time to do it rather than up front because people have work to go in the next morning and everything like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it was just it was just sad. It was like I said, it was pretty. It was, I wanted to say something. And there was a lot of other people that wanted to say something, and mm -hmm. and I think in the past they allow public comments to to be extended so everybody had a chance. And board member Hogan allowed everybody to have their piece right. from to, uh, the parents and everything else. Was uh, children's advocate Louise Petalness? Was she there? No, I didn't see her there. Oh wow. Uh... That's kind of strange of her, so she must have been on her broom somewhere uh, <laughs> yeah. doing something. But, uh, Sean, what do you got going this week? Starting well, first, off. I wanted to ask uh, Daryl about, um, is there any chance that the school board would have a uh, town, hall, town hall meeting? Uh, like, just when they don't have all the other business, they don't have the butt kissing from the union <laughs> and whatnot, uh, just a chance to meet the parents. Maybe have, like, especially, like, for the special needs, uh, the special ed uh, parents, um, just to have their... their uh, their uh, concerns uh, that yeah address has it that there um, there's a lot of special ed parents that are um, boiling over about a few things right I went, uh, a few things like uh, Evan Moron that and also <laughs> the, uh, getting their kids the right services right the that right they need kid. right that well they, need. Yeah, they they should they should have town I agree they should have town hall meetings because I mean instead of having it in one building and like mm -hmm. like you're saying it should be out throughout the community so parents can can express themselves how they feel i mean telephone town halls don't make i don't like that it should be face to face people to people yeah i, I heard that uh i totally did uh gutierrez to cherry pick the people and apparently uh, he, he did. did he did absolutely he did so um yeah because you got you guys saw where they were saying that the city uh, somebody a city staff said that i thought of the city didn't even register yeah. But yet, there's an email with a city employee that said, "Thank you for your registration." And uh, again, if you're going to be a city official, you have to yeah. uh, face your constituents and the voters. That's what it's about. Yeah, I think uh, they should go to the schools and talk to the parents, and especially at least if the kids have the IPs. Right. Uh, but I do think that it would be best if uh, Evan Moore. Evan Moron. Moron just <laughs> sat there and shut up because he might lose a few teeth if he uh, yeah. says any yeah. of his ideas of how to run special ed to the parents. Well, you've got to give him this. He is an expert. You have to be special ed to know special ed. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, you know, let's, uh, let's ask a, a random person. Uh, Ma'am, you, you have uh, parents? I have children, and I am yeah. a parent. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I have two boys, actually, and the town hall meeting is a very... Oh, Town hall meeting is a very good idea because um, although I um, my son attends school in Reno Valley School District, the University School District, and I don't know who Evan Moron is. I am he's on the school board. I, I am looking forward to meeting him. Um, he likes to he likes to simulate rape, forcible rape against women, and he likes to illegally drive. He likes to illegally drive uh, street race on Reno Valley streets. So he's That's on the school board. Yeah, you're, 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 you'll, you'll, uh, after you meet him, there's really. Uh, not much uh, that you'll be impressed with. Yeah, you're not going to be very impressed. Because I'm very active in my son's lives, uh, in the school lives especially. And my son, my eldest son is eight, and he does have a few, in all honesty, behavioral issues. And um, we are trying to work out one of the IEPs with him. He's not in special ed. His academics are perfectly fine. However, his behavior is starting to intrude on his scholastics. Can I, can I suggest a belt? The belt works wonderfully. And I'm... <laughs> Right, okay. switch. Right. For discipline. For discipline. discipline. Not corporal right. punishment. Right. It's just discipline. Right. Absolutely. But um, the staff at his school knows, and um, his teachers know as well. We have him in uh, therapy where he's, we have to get him, I guess, diagnosed with ADHD or either diagnosed or excluded. From it. However, um, it does take time for the assessments, right. and they are, they have a lot of exclusionary, disciplinary, and repercussions for children and 
that have not been diagnosed. Right. So they have a lot of expulsions, a lot of Saturday schools, uh, or not expulsions, excuse me, suspensions. I, I, I'm, um, I'm very experienced with the suspension. Right, uh, but my child's eight. Right. So, okay. and if he's displaying um, characteristics or traits of a child that he undiagnosed because it's not easy to get them diagnosed. Uh, it has, can't be from a primary care physician. It has to be from a licensed therapist after so many sessions. Um, so I feel like there should be other methods. Do they make the parents pay for that out of pocket? If they do not have. Our, my son is we're paying for it out of pocket because mm-hmm. it's not something that like Medi-Cal would cover. Um, it's Medi-Cal covers medical needs. Uh, medical. You would fi- figure that a mental assessment would be something that would cover. However, the assessment that Medi-Cal covers is through a primary care physician. Mm-hmm. The school district does not honor um, ADHD or ADD assessments given from primary care physicians. You have to have your primary care physician and make a referral to a therapist, which is coming well, out Well, you know what? I'm going to give you I'm going to give you uh, information to Louise Pal- Palomero. She's the city advocate and uh, she could be out there advocating for your child. Okay. That's what I feel like the town hall. So, uh, awesome. what what do parents do when they have Medi-Cal or Medicare and their kids need all the assessments? That's what my my that's why I was asking about the town hall with um, the, but your help address right because I've actually gone with my mother to the school board and complained because my son his if his doing well academically he's getting three out of fours on his on his report card for his academics but his behavior is beginning to get him suspended every other week or so because he has impulsive behaviors which are that's why i said he does have characteristics or traits but if you know that he's a child and that he needs to be worked with and i feel like there should be something that parents or the school can do that should not trust parents because that's something that special needs he's although it's not a it's not a learning disability it is a learning it is incapacitating him so well that's one of the things well i I serve on the uh, riverside county behavioral health commission and one and one of the things that i've been trying to work on the board is is to get uh riverside county to get the medical mental health and, and substance abuse uh professionals into our school district so that's what we at the last meeting that I asked the the assistant director what are they doing? They're making progress to get those kind of services, yeah. uh, either through a collaboration into the school district. Okay. Actually, I think that'd be awesome as a certified addiction treatment counselor. I think that working with it's called dual diagnosis, like people that have mental disabilities as well as addictions, um, that would actually kind of work because it's. This, you know, it's addressing their mental needs and their mental disabilities. Yeah, because if you had a limitations, if you had a uh, the counselor on the spot uh, having sessions with these kids on school property, then you can say, yeah, it's really obvious that this kid's having problems. Let's give him the IEP and the special services, and then um, they could also say, well, um, this kid's uh, not so easy to diagnose. Let's refer to county mental health, and uh, that way you could. Do- you could uh, get the kids to county mental health and without putting a huge load on the county yeah, mental health quicker, services it to get it. expedite the service too and the assessments for it because they do have school site counselors but I mean there's limitations to what they can they can't assess right. anything anything that's out of their scope of competence they can't they can't diagnose or even advise you to take your oh I, I feel like your son has ADD go get him done they can't say that they can't say that they're not allowed to it's out of their scope of competence but they can sit with them and try to give indications of things, you know, like, oh, well, you know, this is something that I've had another child with or something I've seen another child Mm -hmm. suffer from. But, I mean, while we're worried about uh, things that are not really so important (laughs) in schools, um, why, like you were saying with the the award ceremony or what have you, like, it's better to address these things because how better to encourage education opposed to limiting it with exclusionary methods. But uh, that's odd they uh, would uh, drop hints of Parents, because not all parents are going to get hints. Not all parents are willing to openly admit that there something's up with their kid. Right. Usually, the proper way a uh, a, a doctor or a counselor uh, addresses something that they're not allowed to speak authoritatively on is to send you a letter giving you a referral to uh, someone that can uh, authoritatively address that issue. Right. That's what it hasn't been. All that they've told us to do thus far is they denied one of the assessment from his primary care physician and said it was inadequate and that they needed one from an actual licensed therapist. I know for certain unless that um, it's a referral 
made to the therapist or something of that nature through the school board, sorry, to um, Medi-Cal stating that, Medi-Cal will not give you just a referral to a therapist to assess your child. So at the moment, I'm currently, my mother and I are currently splitting the cost actually of the therapy sessions. It's once a week. He's been going for the last three three or four weeks, but it's still, his behavior it hasn't changed, and he still, they haven't made the assessment, so if there is something that needs to be done, it's still, he's still going through the repercussions on a daily basis at right. school, is all um, I'm saying. You know, we're out here on Starbucks on Fredericks, of course it's Thursday, we on Wednesday, I was sick, I was down with my uh, lupus condition, but we're still uh, very, very uh, consistent in doing the show. Uh, Miss Leah, and I'm going to call her Leah because I, I'm reading it off her Starbucks cup, so I don't want to be too formal. Um, you're, you said you were an addiction? I'm an addiction treatment. Treat, treatment counselor. Now, let me ask you this, because uh, uh, Sean and um, Mr. Moreno Valley, Daryl here, they're really big into the mental health issue and the problems that are going on in the city. How much, in your in your expert opinion, does the addiction does addiction play into the mental health aspect as we, as the person gets older, or even if they're not, you know, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Um, especially undiagnosed. If people suffer from mental illness. People suffer from mental illnesses that are undiagnosed or unaddressed, rather, and they're just deep into their addiction, into the disease. Um, it's it can be very, very detrimental, actually, because they haven't. They're two separate realms, and as someone that's suffering from a mental disorder, they have to get it addressed. As somebody that's suffering from the side of addiction, they have to have that addressed as well. They have there's if they go unaddressed or untreated, it can only intensify or worsen. In your so. experience, how many? You know, is it, is it an epidemic going on in your experience? I mean, you know, just give us the... And it's going to... It's it's a heightening epidemic because right. um, it's never going to go anywhere. Okay. You can... Oh. Alcohol is legal. Tobacco is legal. Weed is going to be legal. It's legal. It's yeah, it's weed legal. can cause uh, psychosis. And yeah. Trigger schizophrenia in people with uh, a history of that in their family. It's, I mean, okay. most uh, mental illnesses and even... Most addictions are hereditary, so okay. it can't. There, you know, there's a gene that can be passed down. Just depends on. Um, I would say maybe the how people react to it. You know, like right. just, just because some people aren't always over compulsive or aren't as impulsive, rather. You know, with things, they know how to do things in moderation and tolerance. For those that don't, and it goes untreated, it's, it worsens, especially with people that have uh, mental illness. Go unaddressed, and they choose to pick up. And they, you know, they, right. they're like in the uh, what do you call it? The chronic stages of addiction. Right. There's no way that it, it can it can get any better. Right, for this now, right um, now, what would we need in Reno Valley to uh, to uh, provide the services necessary to reduce the load of uh, mental illness and addiction on law enforcement? What would we need in Reno Valley to money? <laughs> how, yeah. How would, how would what what services resources would we need? To address mental health and substance abuse issues in a way that uh, wouldn't be such a law enforcement problem, where we can get a uh, number of police calls related to uh, oh, like what, domestic disturbances. Yeah, domestic by disturbances, fifty one fifty, drunk in public, or well, I think domestic that we violence. Should have, um, I know that Riverside County does have a few um, inpatient treatment centers where you can check yourself in. It doesn't have to be court ordered or anything like that. But I think that there should be more community awareness about it because there, is a, there aren't a lot of people that are aware that they're walking around with schizophrenia or bipolar. They've been, they're not diagnosed. Yeah. Been, you know, so maybe if there were more uh, resources available to help people or to trigger uh, something in their mind, like, hey, this may be, maybe this would be a good uh, research, a research for me. Are you, uh, I, I, I honestly don't know much about this. I'm asking you. I'm, are, are you familiar with uh, the mental health court system? No, not in depth. I've worked with, um, I've done like groups with facilitating teenagers that were court ordered to our program in our facility in Los Angeles. It was called Mela Counseling Services, but uh, like they were duly diagnosed. They were um, problematic as far as their behavior in school, but if they were like special needs coming from uh, charter schools in Los Angeles, yeah. but they also had addiction problems. So they were court ordered because of their behavior. They committed some form of crime or were truant to crimes or violent. Um, they were court ordered to our program. Yeah. But there, I feel like there need to be. Um, I feel like there just needs to be more resources available, especially in Riverside County, where places where people can uh, maybe support groups or offer literature and things of that nature to help people understand, you know, maybe this is something that I've been struggling with and I'm not really, they can identify some of the characteristics and be willing to get help with that. Yeah. And 
the medications also right. that will help. Um, are there any like websites or things that we can go to or like resources within the county or the city that you know of that would be, I know you're coming from LA, right. I guess you I said. Like, not for, yeah. I haven't worked out here at all. Right. I just okay. applied a few places in Riverside right. and Riverside County, like inpatient treatments because okay. I prefer to work with people that want change, that okay. want to change, that are aware of it. Um, with like uh, people that go to, that are uh, addicts but maybe sent to jail or incarcerated, mm-hmm. That's not people that want to change and stop. They're, okay. they're not abstaining from their addiction. They are just being separated. Right. From it. And so coming like, out super predators. Right. I mean, it doesn't help <laughs> yeah. them. Like, right. And it makes it actually will aggravate a person more right. if they're used to it. But okay. no, um, I just feel like in, informing and educating the public and yeah. offering, you know, how you have your debates sure. and things like that where you host it. Town halls. Yes. Things. Mental mental illness awareness or uh, support groups like AA, things like sure. that. They do offer um, literature on it also because alcoholism, after a certain length of time, it does it affects, your brain, it affects your brain cells. It affects your um, mental, the entire mental system. Yeah, I know so it even uh, like, alcohol eventually replaces certain chemicals in the that's brain. Why, that's too. exactly what right. I'm saying. So the it, neurons. it um, increase it not increases, it invokes it. Like that's what will start some of the mental illnesses. Mm-hmm. And then like lack of having your their whatever their niche is or you know their drug or their alcohol can make them flash can make them more volatile can make them so without it being addressed and without offering the correct resources to give these people healthy lifestyles and offer them things um in place of what they're using i don't feel like it's going to be at all any way beneficial especially in marino valley or riverside county there's so many be nice, or, be nice, right, right be nice, right, right, yes. There are so many more youth that are impressionable, so much yeah. more, like this generation period. So the drugs are getting harder, the teens are getting... Wilder. And it's not it's not going to change without getting a hold on it. That's why I was saying that I feel like if it goes overlooked and we keep brushing it under the rug, it's not going to help any, and right. it's only going to... Right. Um, Daryl, you got any suggestions or questions for... May I call you Miss Lee? Sure. Lee. Well, that's the... Because we meet uh, the Riverside County Behavioral Health Commission. We meet uh, on Wednesdays at 12 down at Ruston, off of Ruston uh, in, uh, near Spruce. And it's from 12 to 2. And you're welcome to come there. And we have the director. He's there. Uh, Steve, he, he, he's there. And uh, we have the whole commission. We have... Um, we have... Uh, uh, service providers there too. Okay. The number. So you can come there and see what we do and ask questions. Yeah. And there are, there are a lot of support systems there. I bet they do have some public speaking time, and you can, there is an opportunity to talk to pe- to the commissioners and other experts afterwards. Awesome. Okay. See, yeah. that's, that's cool. Awesome. Awesome. I think um, that would help the community. Right now, uh, I just have, I just have this one question with the uh, marijuana initiative that just passed. Uh, Moreno Valley is a very very poor city. Not really poor because, well, it's poor when you got a lot of 99 cent stores and warehouses. That, that shows you you're not spending your money wisely because obviously you don't see the revenue from all these warehouses and things like that. So as a uh, council election specialist, a town like Moreno Valley or a city as, like Moreno Valley, we're the second biggest city in, in Riverside County, how much of an impact do you think with the popularization of marijuana and stuff like that, how much do you... Uh, do you think that's really going to affect this city and our youth? How poor is Moreno Valley really? I can think of four medical marijuana dispensaries within a five mile radius of the Starbucks that we're at right now. Wow. Yeah. So, no, we have money. There's no doubt. Just it's just that our like resources are, and that's what I'm saying, because of this <laughs> initiative, how much of damage is this going to do to our young people who think that this social. It's so, drugs, I think that it's going to. Uh, You'll, you'll, we might see property values decreasing. Decreasing. And, uh, uh, we're going to a little hit in our police force. I was we need to say you might see increase, crimes increasing right. and arrest rates increasing. So uh, people are going to be walking right into rate. your house. I don't. I can't say your that. App, right, but right. I do know that um, marijuana does sensitize, or uh, I don't know what the correct word is, but right. I know that it. it makes them not give a damn in all honesty and they already have that problem as as a youth anyway so Mm. drugs are so over publicized especially socially and in music and Mm -hmm. um 
I just feel like society. Period. Yeah. It is so widely accepted. No matter what it is. Not in my house. That's all I'm saying. Right. I'm like from marijuana to cocaine to promethazine and codeine to smoking cigarettes. Period. It doesn't matter what big people doing, what actresses and actors and musicians are doing and speaking of and rapping right, about but, it but, so openly. But wouldn't that be more now? of a follower's mentality versus a leader's mentality? Which starts in your household with your children. Okay. You know, it depends on how you raise your children. Right. But right now, children are impressionable, period. Well, is my well point. the children are raising themselves, in my opinion, because mommy and daddy are working just to pay the bills. That's true also. So, so that is, that's why I'm like, it just depends on what you instill in them, which is, goes back to what I was saying about my son and his undiagnosed situations thus far I don't feel like excluding him is going to allow him to continue to excel in school right. if his grades are already okay but his behavior is a problem they need to find something other than an exclusionary uh, method repercussion for him well in back in my grade. day it was either jail or the military I chose the military in second grade it was jail or the military yes back in the, the old stone ages that's how it was yeah. in the military school you know, military school, school for sure right. my brother Okay. Mom was not playing any there you games. Go. There not, you go. That's what my point is. It starts with discipline. Right. Uh, I have drug addicts in my family. Very, Who doesn't? Right. So that's why <laughs> so, I'm like back in the old days, right. like you were saying. But the only way to get the cycle to stop mm. is to break the cycle. So that's right. why I just feel like the the drugs, like he was saying, and as far as like the police, mm. I don't know how. I don't feel all police are bad. I just don't. No, just them. most of them. I mean, you know. Yeah. There yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm just a troublemaker now. Chief right. Al- Altaveras, if you're hearing this, I didn't mean that like That's that. That's why I was like, I'm, I'm not yeah. one. I don't have anything to say different. Right. I love Riverside. Yeah. <laughs> so but um, I don't feel like there's any way that's going to be, any, any method that's going to be beneficial to helping the crime rate as far as the legalization of marijuana mm-hmm. and the extensive open acceptance of drug use in our youth right now okay. if we don't get a hold on it in schools in our homes today right so okay well could, could you do us a favor and stick around a little bit i can we got some other topics to go to but i think you could weigh in on that as a uh, person who isn't affiliated with the inland empire and former and you're not a wlc do you even know what the wlc is i do not okay good good see so there you go right hey there you go. There no you go. i do not okay great um World topic, Sean. What, what do you got? What is your thought on that mega bomb that just dropped in Afghanistan that killed hundreds of Al Qaeda, but thousands of civilians? Um, I way I understand it, it was a, uh, it was hit, it was uh, dropped on top of a massive tunnel complex. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, uh, I think it, Trump is making a show of force there. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is probably a good thing in it, right before uh, Good Friday and Easter. Um, yeah, uh, but but what whatever happened to all the Russian investigations and talk? Uh, you don't think this is a diversionary thing to get off that subject? Well, I think uh, <laughs> after uh, the, the cruise missiles, I think in, in, in Syria, I think, uh, people really need to start taking a good uh, start rethinking about just how close Trump and Russia really are. Well, I mean, you know, Russia isn't saying much. I mean, it hasn't convinced my mind. I mean, we still got to investigate these allegations, correct? I suppose. But right now, a lot of it looks like it's going to come back to Susan Rice. Right. But, okay, hypothetically, what if, I mean, you got a lot of Russian connections there. That one uh, guy that was an advisor, they said he was acting as a foreign agent. Okay, let's. If Hillary uh, got elected, you would have the same problem. Really. You know, and, and you know what? I agree with you wholeheartedly because people say think that I'm a Democrat. I am not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican either because I'm through with both parties. But I tell people all the time, Hillary would probably be worse. So uh, you, you might not agree with me, but she's a corporate Democrat. There's no difference between her and a corporate yeah, Republican. Her, uh, her, uh, her, a lot of her uh, people have uh, ties to Russian companies. That, of course, uh, the Clinton. The, yeah. the Clinton Foundation. I mean, go to Haiti and, and bring up the name Clinton and see what happens to you. Yeah. You will get either get stabbed, beat up, or dragged down the street like you stole something. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's uh, if people do their homework, I don't care what side. Like I said, Sean's on the left. I don't know. I'm on the left. Sean's on the right. And uh, we can disagree to agree, but, you know, when, when it comes down to it, both sides are the same. It's just that one side might be a little better than the other you know yeah. but the same uh, things are being uh, yeah. utilized but the, the, the Moab um, seems to be an okay use of it um, military target um, the, the, 
the, the whole uh, gas thing in Syria just does not add up. It doesn't add up at all. Uh, anybody that's been in the military within the last 20 years, we've all experienced chemical warfare training. And you can't help a person next to you if you can't help yourself. And uh, Daryl, you, you, you saw the images. What did you think of uh, what's going on? Because if this is a, a, a gas sarin attack, if it's sarin, some of the conditions are convulsions in your muscles, diarrhea, uh, your nose starts bleeding and all this other stuff. And these guys are cameramen. You can see the guy's hand. He has no pr no, protective no. equipment on. And it just didn't make sense. No, it, and it, wasn't it, it didn't make any sense. I mean, going back to what Sean was about the bomb mm -hmm. that it puts out of the airplane, I think it was more to send a message to North Korea right, and to Assad and saying... This is. This He's using is, the Reagan doctrine. That's this is. Basis. This is. This could happen to you. Right. Right. And if they don't scare the crap out of anybody, <laughs> that would. Right. Right. So, um, uh, so so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, they don't talk about the hearings anymore. Uh, Mr. Nunez stepped down from the investigative yeah. thing. Uh, there's uh, Steve Bannon's been removed. So there, there's a lot well, uh, of stuff Steve, happening. Steve, Steve Bannon didn't have a seat, but he, uh, last I heard, he still has uh, his clearance and he's still allowed mm. to attend the meetings. Which doesn't make sense if you're just a political uh, person. To, to sit on the NS, NSA and NSE and stuff like that doesn't make any sense to me. Because you, you bring no value to it. Number one, you know, I, I hate these civilians. I really do. You have no military background whatsoever, but yet you're the biggest war hawk in the room. Now, uh, you know, I do agree that military men should fight, uh, you know, military wars. But at the same time, they, they, they can't do it without giving a direction. And, and you just can't just say, do what you think you need to do. Well, that, that's why I really like uh, Mattis being uh, Secretary yeah. of Defense so much. Right, yeah. Uh, he has a little bit more sense because he's been there. Yeah. Um, like I said, when Trump is just like, well, I just gave him authorization. You got some guys like General MacArthur that was willing to... Uh, nuke the uh, Yalu River during the Korean War and wanted to use nuclear weapons. So, you know, some of these guys can get out of hand if you don't rein them in. And that's that's another reason why we should always have a civilian uh, leash on our military because, you know, this stuff could get beat when it need to get beat. And that conventional bomb, I want everybody to understand, I used to train on that when I was stationed in Alaska when I was flying C-130s up there. They We don't have a stockpile of those bombs. There's only so many made. And yeah, it's conventional, but something of that magnitude, which is pushed out of a C-130, of that magnitude, detonates like a nuclear bomb. You don't, I mean, uh, if you go to YouTube, you can look up uh, and see the actual testing of what this thing does. It's like a cookie cutter. They use it in Vietnam to make helipads so the helicopters could come and land and, you know, get the troops out, whatever. But um don't think that we have an unlimited supply because we don't, but it is a show of force, and I, I, I kind of go with what, what Trump did with that. So that, that, was, that was a pretty good thing. So, um, but, but I also uh, wanted to point out that uh, the, now the, the observers in Syria are claiming that uh, Assad used uh, the white phosphorus, which is a ban for use in uh, urban areas. But the thing I noticed from the videos they showed is that um, uh, after they dropped it, there were a whole lot of uh, other secondary explosions. I mean, they had, they dropped it on something, on a target that had a lot of explosives in it. Right, right. Um, you know, I, like I said, I, I, I'm not a, a um, what do you call that, a uh, soloist and you know, America, just close our borders down. But, you know, that's a civil war over there, and that's a sovereign country. Let's just let them fight it out, and if the things get out of hand, Israel will come in there and just and clean everybody's clock. Yeah, I, I think we we should go after Islamic State, but we should not be uh, get we should not get in the middle with uh, Assad and some of those other groups. Well, 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 and, and then on top of that, let's finish Iraq, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan first, then move. Well, right now, it, we have right now uh, finishing off Islamic State would involve finishing Iraq and. Right, that's what and I'm saying. They're, they're kind of in Afghanistan now too. Right, yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. We're, we're just expanding it. Where let, let's let's try to try to limit it and, and get the thing done. But yeah, because we really um, every uh, the way the things work in the Middle East is that everyone has uh, friends uh, that are trying to kill each other. Yeah, it's like you have a, Israel is friends with uh, Egypt, Tur Egypt, right. it, Tur it, 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 friends with Turkey. They're friends right. with the Kurds. Uh, the Turks and the Kurds have been at war for decades, if not longer. Um, Israel uh, gets 
gets along with uh, uh, Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, Jordan and Iran aren't necessarily playing very well together. Right, but Jordan and Iraq get along, and it's yeah. just it's, it's like it's like a big uh, a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, Daryl, what, what do you think? It seems like it's just a lot of mixed messages from the administration because one man in there says, "Well, are you going to get a side out?" Mm -hmm. uh, no. We we working on that. Then, so we didn't yeah, really mean that. The problem with uh, getting rid of Assad is we don't have anyone to replace. Right, him. you well, can't get rid of somebody. That's what happened in Iraq. Yeah, yeah. Nation um, building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Ooh, there were point. some mistakes made in Iraq. That there there were some uh, there were some avoidable problems in Iraq. But uh, uh, the thing about Iraq is that with, when we have invaded Iraq, we got to deal with uh, Gaddafi to disarm to disarm him in in, in, in favor of some really lucrative oil contracts. Right. And then uh, oh, then during the Obama administration, they they let uh, the they let the, the local radicals uh, overthrow Gaddafi. So now we have a problem with uh, uh, our deal. Our deals are only going to be good for uh, one presidential administration. The next one, you might be screwed or dead. Right. Well, you, you guys are aware that uh, what's going on in Syria has to do with an oil pipeline that they want to run through Syria. Uh, the, the Russians don't want to uh, give that area because they want to run their pipe through it. But then the uh, one of the oil barren countries, Saudi Arabia, one of them wants to run their pipe, and that's what this is really about. If you do your homework, and they're using the United States as a mercenary force to do the fighting. Well, so, it seems like all the time it's all natural resources. Basically. Yeah, it's always minerally based and stuff like that. But speaking of natural resources, Sean, you, you said something about coal. Yes, um, Trump was uh, at a meeting with uh, with uh, Xiaoping. Yeah, Xi Jinping or whatever it is in. Uh, and uh, Mar-a-Lago um, seems like a lot of people uh, like uh, the, the the Florida resort better than Camp David. Well, yeah, but it's costing the American taxpayers millions of dollars. Yeah, but the thing about this is that uh, he just uh, Trump just basically seriously jump started the coal industry with a de with a trade deal with China to trade them coal, and we we uh, replaced. Uh, China is really sick of North Korea right now, so uh, they're they're, they're going to be buying American coal instead of North Korean coal. Uh, is, so it's a win-win situation. We, North Korea is basically being told that, that everyone's sick of their crap, and our our uh, our coal industry is going to thrive, and the whole Appalachian area is going to have uh, some uh, economic relief and uh, national security uh, benefits from it. Right. Too. Well, if if Trump can secure that deal, which has to go through the Senate for approval, um, why are we using Chinese steel versus American steel when it comes to projects here in the United States? Well, Trump has only had like about three months, or three or four months to uh, to try and make those changes. Um, is, it, is it executive orders for uh, some of the the federal infrastructure projects are going to require uh, American steel? And right now, um, with deals like this, he is on track to eventually revive our industry. Right. Well, uh, another thing that came out in the Trump administration is 500 and something positions have yet to be filled. He's only nominated 23 people or 24 people out of the 24 that was nominated. 22 have been approved so why is it taking you know if he doesn't start paying attention to getting his cabinet together maybe some of these things will go through but it's like he's not doing that um, he not controls sure. the congress so most of his approvals are going to go through yeah, well um if uh if Congress can uh, handle a lot of the issues that the cabinet is doing, then I'd prefer that because that would be, because in that case it would be uh, handled by elected officials that are accountable to the people. Right. The, you know that would be nice against the Constitution, three separate parts of government. So it, they can't do it. So he has to assemble that team and get it done. And you know the sad thing is Chris Christie had names and numbers of people, but because of the infighting within his cabinet and his son-in-law, the nepotism, he didn't go with that. So. Uh, it's going to take a, lo a little bit more time to get this thing going. I don't know if it's going to take a year or two years, but what I don't like about this president is he keeps blaming Obama, which when Obama took office, I didn't like Obama, keep saying, I inherited this from Bush. You are the president now. It is your war. It's your campaign. Problem now. Deal with it. Yeah. Eventually, and pretty soon uh, that is going to be the case to where uh, – He's doing so, doing things so radically different from Obama that it's going to be hard to compare. Yeah, a lot of it might lead him to jail. Yeah. Uh, well, we, yeah. you know, you were talking about. I was sitting there thinking about the steel deal mm -hmm. and, and with China, and I also I'm thinking, you know, the coal. But also, it all it all comes together when you think about North Korea. Okay. And you, and you got this young kid 
that's thinking he's gonna hit us. But I think with that kind of did have a more. Wait, 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 wait! I don't want to cut you off. You said young kid. This guy's over thirty years old. I want you to keep that because I'm gonna elaborate to something a little bit later. But go ahead. Well, I think well, I know you were, where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, okay. well, that's the thing about it. Angle. See, Trump's angle is we want to get North Korea under control, but I think China will take care of that. I think if he, he develops the relationship with China as he's doing, and I think yep. it's the money. Well, extreme bedfellows. Well, yeah. that's what I'm thinking because even if you keep people like Assad in power, mm. and you got this kid over in North Korea that's trying to say we're going to hit America, or whatever. Mm. I think at some point China is going to say, you know, yeah, you business, go. yeah, money is yeah. money and business is business. Yeah, China wants China's going to want to try and keep a communist uh, government there, but they're, they're really getting sick of um, fat kid. Right, right. So. Um, but that's interesting that you say that he's a kid. This guy's over 30 years old. And uh, in the next hour, we're going to talk about Moreno Valley politics and the debate coming up. Because we have a 22-year-old kid that has no graphic background. He is not a property owner. He doesn't own a home. I doubt if he owns a tricycle. And he's running in the District 4 area and... I have a problem with that because he doesn't have enough life experience, in my opinion. But I'm not the one that gets to vote over there. It's the people over there. I want people to think about that. You got a dictator that is over 30 years old controlling a country. And he's just immature, dumb, rattling stuff off at the mouth, whatever the deal is. I want to take that 30-year-old kid. Now we've got a kid that's 22 years old. And he wants to run for city council under an immature, idiot mayor who still lives at home with mommy and daddy. And I have a uh, criminal representative named Victoria Baca, who ever since the election, has not even been seen in this district. And then, Idi Gutierrez is using his mayor platform, which is against the rules and the law, and endorsing this kid because I've got pictures of him at this guy's, it's okay to go to the rally, but you can't go to the rally use, using your nameplate as mayor. Why do we let these people get away with this stuff? How come nobody says that? Why does it take groups like us to point these things out and say, wait a minute, he's his capacity as a mayor to endorse and give the impression of endorsing the kids? Because when the mayor speaks, he speaks for who? Not for himself. He's speaking for the city of Marino Valley, correct? So we're going to get into that in, in, in the next hour, but uh, we got a lot to talk about with that because the debates are coming up a lot. Uh, you've got Commissioner Baker is in it. Hector Diaz is in it. Shay Shay, and that's just my little nickname for her, Shalinda Bernard is in it. And this guy, uh, what's his name? Cabreras. Kid Cabreras. I'm going to call him Kid Cabreras. Uh, that's a little bit better than Child Cabreras, but Kid Cabreras because it sounds better. So we're going to get into the next hour, and you guys just stand by where we are not done with that guy just yet.